Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Deckin' Around Deck Specs. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Enigmas playing cards. But before we jump into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And please ring the bell. So this deck is produced by David Kwong, Dave Shukin, and Chris Chelko and illustrated by Billy French. It was printed by USPCC on their premium stock, and both the limited and standard decks are part of an unspecified print run. You can see in the image they have the standard edition, which is the blue version, and then the limited, which is the red version. The limited was only available should you have backed the blue on the Kickstarter, and the blue edition actually retails now for $18. Let's check it out. So this deck has a really actually cool vibe to the tuck. It's two different kind of colors of blue, but there's this really interesting matte aesthetic to it with shine, like high gloss highlights across the whole thing, which I thought was really cool. Um, it has a very library-esque feel to it there, as you can see. The idea being that this deck is themed around the mysterious estate riverbank in Chicago. Um, so one of the things you'll see on the back design there is some Latin text, which actually means knowledge is power. And then this whole themed back design, which runs with the Riverbank idea. The deck handles beautifully being, you know, USPCC stock. And then you have these two ad cards, which came with the deck, which I think are really interesting, which we'll talk about a little bit later, which deal with puzzles included in this deck. So you have these two uh, similar but differently colored jokers there, and then this stylized Ace of Spades, which is a lock and scroll work style to it. Other than that, the deck is actually relatively standard. They did use a Arco styled court for all of the court cards after, you know, trying to get into that kind of period vibe with it. But as you can see, the, card, the pips and indices themselves are relatively standard. The one really cool thing I think about this deck is not only are there puzzles built into it, David Kwong being a New York Times crossword puzzle creator, but those two cards saw, uh, have four puzzles built into them. And once you solve those, they actually create their own little eight-step puzzle hunt created by Dave Shukin, who's a master puzzle maker. I thought that was really kind of a fun little additional piece to this whole deck. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Actually, uh, if you look at those pips, they kind of look like they have like indents. Like if you see uh, on the high, yeah. it has kind of like a, a, a top bubble. Yeah. Um, like kind of like an, a bigger indent in the, the spades and clubs actually look the same yeah, way. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think one of the really cool things about yeah. this too, you know, like I mentioned, this was all themed around Riverbank, which is this uh, kind of mysterious, you know, 1900s um, Chicago state where scientists actually worked on crypto cryptology and things like that, you know, at the turn of the, the 20th century, which really correlates so well with the idea that Dave Shukin, a master puzzle maker, and David Kwong, a crossword puzzle maker, created this deck with Chris Chelko to, you know, represent puzzles and themes of, you know, that era, which I think is really cool. Like the fact that this is not only a deck of cards, but also five puzzles built into it is, is interesting, especially because I feel like in this day and age, a lot of people who enjoy cards also really do enjoy puzzles as well. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the back of the tuck, uh, it definitely looks like there's a lot of stuff to find. In yeah. There. You know, you might find some cool little uh, details one day and another day see something totally new you know it's kind of like opening up a cabinet or um you know kind of like a little mysterious chest or something absolutely and like i said you know there's some really cool highlighting using like a gloss ink on the top which really helps with that like things being eye-catching um the whole deck mm. itself really is just well designed super intricate the the two things that to me i think would have been interesting to see. And I think this is something we see a lot with um, with some designers is, not even some designers, a lot of, you know, either first time designers or people who aren't necessarily, are more magic oriented is, again, the standard courts. I think there's a great, there's a lot to be said for standard courts and being a worker's deck, but it's always nice to see those little bit of touches. It would have been really cool to see some of the courts stylized with something else in hand, whether it be, you know, like, uh, not to say they had to be holding a Rubik's Cube or anything like that, but things like a key or some little puzzle and mystery oriented things really would have added a nice little touch to it. Um, that 
And sometimes, you know, even with the back design, for all the intricacy in it, and I think they did well with this one building in the contrast because it's a lighter and a darker blue, but even like a third color, just a slight third color might have helped even build out more of the depth to the design because there is so much to it. Yeah. Okay. I like that. that. That light blue is really nice. It definitely adds highlights throughout the... Back yeah, it's almost like a like if you mix like a robin's egg blue with a little bit of gray. It's got a little bit of gray to it, but it's mm. such a beautiful color. I really do think this is probably one of the coolest decks I've seen designed from a first time you know creator in a while. So it's it's very well done. Nice. Yeah. Thanks everyone for checking out this episode of Decking Around Deck Specs. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We drop these every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday, giving you the freshest looks at the newest decks. Hey, peace.